Hi everyone and welcome back. And in this video we are going to talk about Nest.js with Mongoose. And here we are going to have multiple collections. We are going to use user authentication. Okay, user can add blog post, can add comment, can create different categories, can tag those posts with the different categories. So it's a kind of a multiple collections and we are going to define the relationships between collections using one to one, one to many, many to many. And we are going to populate that data after storing the data in different collections. Okay, so this is the, the bare bone minimal structure I, I already have from the Nest CLI. Okay, here you can see we have simple package.json and here you can take a look what all different dependencies we have. We have Nest JS Mongoose, that is very important. Rest all the dependencies like Passport, JWT, JSON Web Token, all are required for authentication. Okay, cookie parsers and all, these are and the no Nest JS code dependencies. So it's like a basic setup and on top of that, I installed some of my modules like Nest JS Mongoose, Nest JS Passport, JWT, uh, uh, Happy Joy for the payload validation and uh, vcrypt for encrypting the passwords and all these are like common dependencies we have now what we are doing here is uh, if you look at the source i don't have anything right now it's like main.ts and i need to write app module okay and i have registered a global pipe global validation pipe because we are going to do the payload validation for all the requests and i am also using cookie parser we will see how we can use cookie parser here and listening on 3000 po okay after this what is the the primary task here we are thinking to create a some kind of a blog app where user will log in user will register user will log in and then he can start creating the blog post and we will expose the enough api so that he can read, write, update, delete the comments, the blogs and everything. Okay, so everything will go inside a source. I mean, either you can create a different domains or you can create a folder based structure. Let's say I'm creating a users. All the things related to users will go here like the user model, controller services, metadata or some DTUs, anything. So posts. Like you wanted to tag a particular blog for the AWS, for the Azure, for your Node.js, Nest.js and the next last one is authentication. So authentication is easy when you are writing a simple express app. Okay, there is a login, there is a register, there is a login. Use this local strategy passport, just validate the email password. If everything is good, just return a token. I mean validation is kind of similar here but here you have to use JWT strategy, local strategy, write a different auth guards, little bit complex but it's easy to understand okay you are doing simple authentication you will be dependent on user service to check if user is logged in whatever the credential you have passed is correct then you need to generate a token you will be using a local strategy for that and once you uh, the user receives the token and he will start sending that token in the, the protected APIs. There we need to use, use JWT strategy. JWT strategy will extract the authorization header, decode that and then it will validate if the, the token is valid and the user exists in system. So we, all those things we are going to do in the authentication. So let's create app model. Uh, currently this is our root module this root module will come uh, will contain the post modules user module authentication module and the categories module and here we are going to do all different kind of initialization so how we create a module module we will define all the things like we define imports imports is an array and now first of all like how we manage the configurations how we manage the configurations, how we manage the database connections and all these things are like generic topic. And to manage the configurations, there are many ways. Either you can write your own config service or you can use Nest.js config service or config module, right, which Nest.js provides. And we can just use, now inside this, we can do a lot of things with the config service provided by 
nest.js so there is a config module and here we can do for root and I will provide all my configurations here sometimes it's too much so you can create a separate module like you will be providing all different uh, environment variables which you wanted to use in the whole application and you can also also do the validate validation on top of that like a port should be a number username should be a string all these kind of validations validation schema and I'm going to use joy for that joy.object because this the whole an object a whole will be object and then here you can pass either I can just have a single environment variable mongodb uri or you can have a three four different environment variable mongo username password database mongo host and I can say okay all are required I can simply say is port which is of type uh, joy dot number I need to import the joy also from happy joy which we have already added in the package.json so here we can do the so the, the, this is a native validation which it is providing and this is required and now while bootstrapping the application if okay if port is not there obviously I'm not going to start the application and environment you can also have the environment which is of type string so here the port should be of type number right and this is of string both are required now other environment variables are like mongo username or I can simply say is a mongo URI just to keep it simple instead of having 10 different variables okay so this is my validation schema and then I can use uh, the mongoose nest.js mongoose module because this is going to be helpful for us mongoose module and I can initialize this because inside imports we are going to define all the modules mongoose module dot either you write a dynamic module or you can just do a for root async and you can use your config service to inject the configuration inside it so it's like a dynamic initialization of this module because we are dependent on some environment variables and we are passing those from the config service so inside this we are importing config module we are dependent on the config module for the initializing mongoose module and here use factory this is how we do it use factory and this is async initialization and we are injecting the config service and here we will do all those things so what it should return if you look at the, the proper syntax how we do the mongoose module dynamic initialization then it just need a uri and uri i can get from config service const uri equal to config service dot get and I can use mongo uri this variable that's enough to get the value so I got the uri and let's say if you also wanted to pass the the database name most of the time what I do is I attach the database name in the mongodb mongo uri so you don't need to pass that otherwise you can also pass another thing is I think db name yeah these are the two attributes db name and the uri this you need to return for root async for the dynamic initialization you can check the the module options if I go to the TypeScript definition for this it is looking for uh, async options module metadata a connection name use class and inside use factory module options yes here you can see what all things we need URI retry time connection names and all and in the module options these are the same thing right so these are the, the attributes which you need to specify while doing the dynamic initialization you can also provide a connection name some delay retry attempts and the connection factory okay let's go to our code so we are providing enough information in the URI so we can skip this and we are going to use a mongodb container 
to start the application i mean start the mongodb container and start using it now we are returning this and we can also inject so what we are injecting config service and this is our dynamic initialization now after this you can specify all your modules you wanted to add like post module user module authentication module and all okay now i can define the controllers what happened let's see if we are so this is the imports i'm closing the imports after that we can define controllers and the providers and it should be followed by a simple class okay and i need to import something and import from nsjs common so this is my root module now what i will do is i am importing all the required things now i will start creating i will start creating other modules and i will keep adding those modules in the inputs declaration here okay like user module authentication module all will come inside the inputs because inputs contains okay what all modules you have this is the root module sub modules will be user module post module categories authentication and all okay this is just a dynamic initialization of uh, mongoose module you can do it in n number of ways there are there are n number of ways to manage the configuration also you can write your own config service right and you can write get resetters and from the config service you can populate the data in the process.env and get it from there this is also looking for inside the process.env object only checking okay port is there env is there mongo uri is there or not before starting the nsjs application so this is the baseline configuration now we can get started with one by one modules and start keep adding those modules here okay so now we can start our application to just test this how it is working i already have docker container up and running for the mongodb and i populated things in the dot env like port env mongo uri and all npm run start that should start my application if everything is good and if you pass the port as a string if you miss the environment then obviously this will break because in the config module we have said port is required env is required and mongo uri is required so all the things we need <clears throat> now this will start the application and then we will proceed further for writing the user apis and we are going to use a lot of things here like uh, we are going to define the user model uh, let's say address models posts categories and all and authentication is all about okay login and register user would should be able to register and user should be able to log in and we are going to return the jwt token in the cookies and whenever you do log out then we are going to clear the server side cookies so user should not be able to use that uh, cookies again <clears throat> okay so our next step is defining our user module so here we are going to create a couple of things in the dto as a folder and we can create a, a model or let's create a file directly so here we are going to have a user dot model dot user dot schema is good thing schema is a good name user.schema.ts similarly user will also have an address user dot uh, oh, let's call it as address.schema.ts and then user.module.ts and user service.ts okay so we have everything ready now we can start writing the so user module will be a similar to app module here the imports declaration will be different 
So we can just remove these imports for now. Here we will define the controllers and services for the user module. Okay, now we can start defining the schema. Like these are the MongoDB uh, models, right? And these are kind of similar, but here we are writing classes to define the schema. So how we are going to do this? Export class and user. And as we know, NestJS is full of annotations, right? So here we have to use schema as annotation and schema takes couple of arguments also like if you want to specify document type and all the other things so it has couple of arguments to json i guess and inside this this is an object here we can specify if we are going to use getters in the schema model or the virtuals. We'll talk about what these are. <clears throat> so getters like uh, sometimes you wanted to define the getter setters in your schema model virtuals. Virtuals are just like a MongoDB concept, Mungu's concept. What it does is if you wanted to aggregate something, aggregate while fetching the data from the model without even saving it. It's like you wanted to fetch username which is a concatenation of first name and last name so you can actually return username from the document collection every document without even storing username as a column because it is nothing but it's a it's an aggregation of first name and last name okay. this let me see what is the warning value of type of schema is not callable did you mean to include okay this is an object and then I have two JSON. Let's see what it is. Maybe this warning will go away. And here we are going to define all the prop properties. So we are going to use this annotation prop. Annotation prop. And let's say it should be simply prop and then the name. Public, let's say the first name, which is of type string. Right, so similarly we can define all the props. We can import it is coming from Mongoose. So here we can define all the props. So what we are going to have first name, last name as a prop, first name, last name, and uh, let's say full name. Full name is a virtual property. It's not going to be a column. Okay, and then we have first name, last name. Now we can talk about email and password. And for the email, because we want to have a unique, so all these kind of constraint is also available here. So this is the prop and here, I think we can pass unique, which is true. And I'm talking about email. Then I have a password in the user collection. So here I'm doing password. These are like same as the type ORM entity declaration, right? Here I have to exclude this because I do not want to expose this uh, in the response. I don't know if this is there. It should be coming from Mongoose again. Class transformer. Exclude. Okay, this will be excluded in the response payload. So first name, last name, email, and then we can also have address, which is address is a different schema. So this is of type address. So address is a different schema we are going to create and the type here because this is going to be a sub document or you can call that as a nested document. So address is a different document, different schema and the type here is address schema that we are going to create. 
let's first create the address schema okay type i need to get from class transformer let's see okay i got it address and address schema address schema is i got from address dot schema but that also i need to declare so address schema is of kind of similar i can create address schema simply using export class address and here i can define the properties like a like city street state province or something like that and the id okay so this is like an address document and from here i can expose export the address schema address schema equal to schema factory schema factory dot create or class okay i need to get this schema factory first then i can get create schema from class create i mean create a schema for class and i need to pass this class address so i got the address class and the address schema both create for address takes an argument to are not provided <coughs> compiler is running slow for this editor it's not resolving things now everything is sorted so we have address schema which i'm exposing and there is a document i mean address document is nothing but the type which is of type either address or the document document is coming from mongoose now what i will do is this address we are importing in the user schema so in the user schema we will get the address and the address schema so i got the type address okay now this looks a little clear okay so here the issue is okay this is the problem schema should come from next is mongoose not from mongoose this will fix the problem okay this is about our user collection and what all other things we have let's define the posts because we also want to fetch the posts with the user so this is pointing to the type post and we are going to define the post model this is of post array and these both these properties this property and the full name property both are virtual properties that means these are not the columns in this particular document these are just like virtual properties and we are going to populate them at the run time so how to create a virtual properties simply user schema dot virtual the full name this is the full name and this is how we are going to get the full name and the another virtual property is the posts i'm talking about this column I mean, this is not a collection property. It will be generated at the runtime, and how we are generating it? We are generating it by referencing the post collection from the user collection. So the posts is an array of posts, and how we are getting it? So in the virtual property, this is the column name. This is the property name. It is referring referencing to the post collection. The local field is underscore id, and the foreign key field is the object id in the post collection. and the foreign field is the author so author field is there in the post collection okay that's why this is how it is able to reference and fetch the posts created by a user so whenever you are doing a find by id or any other query then it is always going to fetch the posts along with that okay so here user schema first of all we need to create a user schema and user schema we can create simply by schema factory dot create class and pass the user 
now the important part is creating the post schema so similarly we can create a post schema inside a post post dot schema dot ts and i will copy the address schema and i will do the changes here so we are talking about the post okay the basic property is okay the post title content title content and the now here we are going to define the author right because post will be written by author so it's kind of a reference we are going to create so first just change rename all these things post schema post schema from this post class and then we are exporting the post schema that's it uh, and schema that should again come from nest.js mongoose i mean i was just putting the wrong inputs that's why it was creating a problem so this is the post document and we just created a type schema i think it should resolve after some time now this now we have to define the relationship with the author right so how we are doing it prop so here we are talking about the type what should be the type type is a string it should be type is an object id here we are talking about the relationship with the author right so here the type is the object id which is coming from mongoose.object id and reference is reference is user dot name here we are creating a separate column for it prop this is talking about the author so here we if we define the type if we transform it then what it is pointing to it is pointing to the user and this is author which is of type user so it's like an object okay and there are some warnings these we will get resolved because we have to import the user okay similarly uh, the post will have a categories and all these things right so this is the user relationship and then we are also going to define category so a post will associate post will be associated with the different categories right and this is going to be an array array of categories because there are going to be multiple categories and categories and other collection we are going to create and i should be able to import this looks like my vs code is little slow today it's not doing intellisense properly which is like importing things right away so this is how we are going to reference the data so this is the post schema author is representing to the uh, user collection categories is representing the array of categories collection okay similarly i mean these are the two important relationships we are going to have in the post model similarly we can create a category and then uh, we have category users we already have post i think these should be enough so let's say we don't need to export this now i can also create a category schema 
it's going to look like similar so i will just copy it so this is the category schema in the post schema we will import category okay content we already have user i need to import category i need to import okay so this is like we have defined all the models now what what is the next thing next thing is uh, getting all the controllers and services added for the posts for the users for the categories and writing the apis for it okay uh, let's see that in the next video meanwhile i will just resolve all these imports uh, looks like my intelli this autocomplete is not working as fast as it used to be i will sort this out and then we'll connect in the next video